Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. I've been uh, collecting Red Rider knives for quite some time now. Uh, this was one of the first ones I picked up, uh, one by Colonial. Uh, this one was made back in the 1990s or so. Uh, and then the 75th anniversary one is right here. I showed this one in a video uh, quite recently, actually. And when this one was um, shown, it was interesting that quite a few people said that they had never heard of Red Rider, and other people did not even know about the Red Rider knives. Uh, I will tell you now, I continue to find Red Rider knives I have never seen before. Uh, so I, that doesn't surprise me. Um, and I guess I really shouldn't have been surprised that there are plenty of people who had never heard of Red Rider. Um, so, uh, I mean, after all, there's people in Europe who, why would they know about some fictitious cowboy? But for those who don't know, Red Rider was a, uh, began life in the comic strips uh, back in the 1920s and 30s. And he had a sidekick named Little Beaver, who was a, a very young Native American of, you know, a very stereotypical Native American who used to say, you betcha him all the time, you know very much pigeon English talking and stuff. So nothing about Red Rider would be considered um, politically correct today. Um, other than the fact, not even the fact that he always got the bad guy. Um, but in any case, Red Rider, like I said, began life in the comic strips and then uh, it went on to a nationally syndicated radio program uh, and then it went into um, the horse operas. Now, for people who don't know what a horse opera was, these were B-movies and, you know, cowboy westerns that were basically two reelers, so they'd be about an hour long, and they were parts of double features that would be shown on a Saturday, and they were very popular. And Red Rider and Little Beaver um, was a, a very popular um, horse opera back in the uh, 40s and 50s. And then it went into... Uh, television. And he actually went into a TV program too. So Red Rider had a very long history in, uh, in America, in American entertainment. And so basically you ended up with a very popular um, movie cowboy. And the next thing that you know, you have products being named after Red Rider. And uh, the Daisy BB gun quickly hopped on board. And, uh, you know, they came out with their lever action BB gun, known as the Red Rider BB gun, because, hey, every boy wanted to be Red Rider uh, because he was a good stand up cowboy. And so if it's popular enough for a BB gun, then it's also going to be popular enough for a pocket knife because pocket knives are even cheaper than BB guns. And there was a time in this country, in the United States, where every little boy had a, a, a pocket knife. So why wouldn't you want a Red Rider pocket knife? In any case, that's the uh, way the Red Rider knives came along. And uh, I want to show you another one that I had never seen before until very recently, even though it's a pretty old knife. Let me take these out of the frame and bring in the new one. Uh, well, not really new, but new to me. And that is this one here. It's actually a little Stockman. But again, you see Red Rider brand pocket knife. Now, I've already cut this out of the, uh, the plastic, which was very annoying. Uh, but as soon as I saw this knife, I thought, man, this is not made by Colonial. This is definitely made by Schrade. Um, and despite what it says on the back here, 1994 Red Rider Enterprises, uh, made in Ireland, card printed in the USA, and they call it the RR329 Outrider. And then it's congratulations and uh, the other patterns out there. So now, as you see, there's four other knives or three other knives that I should go out there and grab. There's the small roper. The Trail Boss, which is the large one, and then the Hired Hand, which is a trapper. Okay, we interrupt this uh, first look at the Red Rider RR329 Outrider Medium Stockman because uh, we're going to go straight to the second look. And the main reason I'm doing that is because in the first look I started comparing the uh, RR329 to the W. M329 Frontier Series Stockman. They are the same knife, but the build quality is not the same. I really got sidetracked. And so 
I want to talk about this knife at some other time and we will just focus on the RR329 Red Rider Stockman. So what can I say about it? Um, as you can see, the build quality is not 100% there. You can see here that the handle is not even uh, lined up correctly to the back spring. Uh, so you're not talking about the best quality knife in the world. Um, you do have three blades on it. You have that long clip blade that uh, you find on a lot of old uh, Imperial Shred knives. Uh, and they continue to use this same clip blade as they transition from USA to Ireland over to China. Um, the blade is fairly tight. Let me move back here. Yeah, there is a slight wobble in the blade, but really insignificant. So it is pretty tight. Uh, you notice it's just stainless steel uh, liners and back springs, and they're not the smoothest of liners. You can see they're, they're kind of coarse. Um, back blades are that high-rise uh, sheep foot blade, which is really easy to get out. Um, nice finger pull, very easy to get out. I would give the uh, pull on it somewhere in the mid-range. So, you know, if you're going with those numbers and stuff, I guess this is somewhere like a four, five, or six. Not really strong, not really weak. Um, same with this blade, the uh, spade blade, which is the funky spade blade, spade blade they use. Uh, you notice it's got that little bit of a drop going on and then it kind of curves into the uh, the turn and you got a nice little belly going on with the spade blade. Little bit of rub on the spade blade opening and closing. You got to remember it's been in a plastic package since 1994. So whatever oil was in there is all gunked up. I have not cleaned this or anything yet. This is really as it was brand new mint back in 1994. Um, the only problem it has on it is some of the uh, um, oxidation of the uh, lubricants and everything inside the uh, clamp packaging. But um, the handles are nice and tight. I do like the Red Rider shield there. It looks like the rope going around the, uh, the little oval shield. And the Red Rider is nicely embossed into it. The other marks you have on there on the blade is um, Red Rider Ireland. Um, it, nowhere on here does it say straight or anything else, and that's because this is Red Rider brand, but we do know from looking at the uh, WM329 that the knife was made by Schrade. I will say that the um, build quality is not the world's greatest. Um, I don't know if I will be bothering to look for the other uh, four knives in this series, uh, but I think the only people who would really be interested in uh, these other knives are people who just want to collect everything by Red Rider. Um, it's not a bad knife. Um, uh, it was definitely an economy knife. It was made for, for young boys and everything. And also probably for the older uh, people who remembered uh, Red Rider fondly and just wanted anything Red Rider, which is, uh, I guess, <laughs> I'm part of that target audience. I do like the um, the card that came with it and the fact that it is easy to remove. You see here they have it so you can cut it out. I'm not planning on cutting it out. There's no real reason to, but... Uh, it's a nice, uh, colorful card, very rem reminiscent of Red Rider, the comic strip and everything. And um, as far as uh, Stockman's go, it's about as uh, good a quality a Stockman, actually a little bit better quality Stockman than the other um, uh, Imperial Shrade knives that were coming out uh, out of Ireland back in the 1990s. Uh, despite the issues you see on this knife, I think it has slightly better uh, quality control than you would have had on the uh, Frontier series uh, uh, Stockman's uh, coming out of Schrade. And uh, with that said, uh, we'll move on to some slides of the knife so you can get a uh, better look at some of the close-up details. And uh, we'll move on from there. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And if you're a Red Rider fan, um, I have mixed emotions on this knife on if you should pick it up or not. If you're really a diehard Red Rider fan, then you're going to want it. If you're just somebody who uh, uh, is looking for a good stockman, don't waste your money on this knife.
Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.